Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutt of HurricaneTrack.com here with your off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and discussion continuing for Monday, May the 8th. 2017. Let me tell you, there's a lot to talk about today, so let's do not delay. Let's jump right in. The latest sea surface temperature anomalies map has updated from the NOAA NESDA site, and we can see a few very interesting things here. First, note the very warm MDR, the main development region, and even up here in the northeast Atlantic, off the coast of Africa and the Iberian Peninsula. Very warm compared to normal. The trade winds have been weak out this way due, I suppose, in part to the negative NAO. Um, the pressure pattern over the tropical Atlantic has been such that, hey, we've got a pretty significant warm-up, even uh, to the point where Dr. Phil Klotzbach mentioned it in a tweet the other day. It seems that he tweets more about when something is sort of against development, if you will, you know, a lot of negatives for Atlantic development potential. And so when you see him tweet that something that usually is an enhancing feature, it, it's kind of unusual. Um, that's, that's just something that us hurricane geeks follow pretty closely, and it's interesting to note that. Also, in the eastern Pacific, now, you know, there's just a few tiny areas of blue showing up, but this is significant to me, considering that there was a lot of talk about this area really warming up and heading towards El Nino for the hurricane season ahead. You can go ahead and put me on record as saying that I do not think we will be in El Nino threshold uh, by, let's call it, October 1st. And I can show you the reasons why. I've been talking about this. Again, I, I don't make predictions necessarily. I like to look at what the models are showing long range what the different prognosticators of those models are saying and then we see if the evidence fits okay it's kind of like trying to solve a crime uh, and, and looking at the forensic evidence and in this case we have all kinds of data and part of that data set of course is the southern oscillation index and if you are looking for an El Nino to develop this is definitely on your side right now because all of the index numbers are negative to the point where generally the Bureau of Meteorology here from Australia, that minus eight, that's getting on down there for the 30 day, but the 90 day average still, you know, uh, minus three, and that's not very significant. However, certainly you could argue that this is consistently negative, and so the pressure pattern at least supports a warm ENSO event beginning. And I think, however, that this is just going to be too late because we can go back and see. I mean, just look, in February, it was only minus 2. In March, we took a pretty good increase at plus 3. And then in April, we were minus 6. And this month, we will probably end up negative as well. We'll see. Um, so I just think that you know these numbers were not very low and that it probably started too late for us to have anything substantial that would quote-unquote wreck the Atlantic hurricane season. And remember, that being said, I'm not pro-destruction and misery and loss of life, but we do track hurricanes. That's what this is all about. And so if we are looking for favorable areas for hurricane development, then there's just certain ways we talk about things. So don't get upset. It's not like I'm rooting for hurricanes to run over people. If they're going to happen, we want to make sure we stay ahead of it. That's all this is about. So the subsurface is another tool, and this just updated recently. Even though today is May the 8th, there's always a lag with these particular graphics, and so the latest one is the 3rd of May. And again, here too, some very interesting developments. Look at the thermal profile here, and that's basically what this is, of a majority of the Pacific here. This is way over in the Western Pacific, uh, out towards Indonesia, in fact. If my longitudinal ge geographic locator in my brain is correct. And, and the rest of the Pacific, though, normal to just a few areas slightly above normal. And then you've got these cold pools that are still lingering. And yes, we still have this large blob of positive anomalies in the subsurface, but it's going to take a while. I mean, this is the 3rd of May, and as I talked about last time, 
you know, this could take a couple of months to get all the way over if we had sustained westerly winds causing downwelling over here. Um, and as it is, the pressure pattern generally supports this, but it's going to have to really kick in to push all of this warm water anomaly here over to the east. And then, you know, what do we do with this? This has to be sort of gotten rid of, if you will. And that's all going to take time. And meanwhile, the clock's ticking, and we will enter hurricane season uh, not in an El Nino, that's for sure. In fact, this is from Levi Cowan's site. want to make sure we give credit where credit is due, tropicaltidbits.com. He's got this nice plot showing from uh, this particular uh, reference point, the CDAS Nino 3.4 index, and today's value, only positive 0.3. Remember, just recently, the Climate Prediction Center said that it was up to 0.5. Let's see if I can draw that for you. Uh, and in fact, even in today's, that's a terrible 0.5, but even in today's update, they still say it's at 0.5. And, you know, I'm not going to argue against folks that, you know, it just, that doesn't look like that's 0.5 out here to me. That's all I'm going to say. And then this graphic here, um, I would have to research exactly where this number comes from, but you know, it seems legitimate that between 0.3 and 0.5, hey, you know what? It's going to fluctuate. Bottom line is, it's not 0.8 and it's not point. Uh, it's not 1.0. So we are not in an El Nino, and it's only less than a month until hurricane season. This is interesting too. Just want to point out, everything's interesting, right? So this is the area that we're talking about. This Nino 3.4. Most of the attention is placed on this, generally speaking, when we're talking about uh, El Nino. And this is the area that's, you know, really not warming up right now. And if we look at that, you remember this map? And look at what that looks like here. All right? This is the region that we're talking about right through here. And it is just not very warm at all. Okay? Just a few positive anomalies in there. But we're not spiking the temperatures over on the east side, real close to South America that leads to uh, rising air here and then sinking air over here. I'm just, it's all seeming to add up that we're going to have a busier hurricane season than was forecast back in April by Dr. Phil Klotzbach and other agencies throughout the year. Um, so look for that to change. That's my, I can put me down for that. A prediction I will make is the numbers will go up from those who have issued them in early June. I, I just, I bet you. We'll see, right? All right, so moving on along here, this too. Hey, this is updated just recently, May the 7th. Check it out. The Australian POAMA model. This is specific for the um, prediction of ENSO events. And check out the ensemble mean, which is this one. Look at this. It dips. I mean, are you kidding me? All of the ensemble members in the Australian POAMA model dips it down as we approach the peak of the hurricane season to near zero right there. That, to me, is a huge, huge piece of information, a piece of the puzzle. All right, That's a big development. Um, and then just a slight increase throughout, you know, into 2018, for goodness sake. So, you know, the Poema model has come down from showing a warm event uh, to now showing a non-event. Uh, certainly no La Nina, but... I just think it's all there. It's coming together, and it's going to be a busy hurricane season in the Atlantic. And, you know, it only takes one, as they say, uh, which we know well enough, right? But if we have more out there, then we have more to be concerned about. The Gulf of Mexico, actual temperatures, I like looking at this often, uh, warming up, as you would expect. You know, here's the 26 Celsius line. Yeah, a few more weeks, and everything will be primed for hurricanes to develop. And this is part of the area that we start to watch the Western Caribbean, Western Atlantic, and the Gulf of Mexico in late May into early June. So far, I don't see anything on the horizon to worry about in that part of the world anyway. Interestingly enough, off the southeast coast, the 26 degrees Celsius line is creeping up here um, close to 32 north and 25 Celsius. Look at these little islands of it all the way up the Gulf Stream. What an amazing thing. And let's just go back one more time. I want to show you. Remember the anomaly chart. Look at this, the northwest Atlantic here, warmer than normal. And, you know, I'm going to point one more thing out while I'm looking at it. you got all this cold water, relative to the average, over this warm water. Wow, where do you think the energy is going to focus this year? Deep tropics, maybe? 
hmm, something else to watch. This can change. It's only May, but all these things are starting to become more and more interesting, at least to me, and maybe they are to you. So yeah, the water temperatures coming up won't be long. Hey, Memorial Day, just a few weeks away, and you can bet the East Coast beaches are going to be quite busy. Also, going to be busy in the Eastern Pacific, it looks like. Their hurricane season via the calendar begins May the 15th, but we've already got a couple of disturbances out here. This one, 80% chance of development over the next five days. And this other one, eh, probably not going to develop. If we look at the graphical five-day outlook for this region, and let's look at the image part of it by itself, yeah, generally speaking, you can see the... Um, the development potential area of track, I guess you would say, anywhere inside this little cocoon, for the most part towards southern Mexico, not too much of a problem for Guatemala and El Salvador and the other areas down there along the Pacific coast of Central America. However, you folks up here in southeast and southern Mexico, uh, pay attention. This could develop and become the season's first named storm in the eastern Pacific. Pretty rare we haven't had development this early in the recorded history. So uh, maybe things are starting to try to get going. And you know, the way I like to look at it, yeah, this is a different basin, but this is located at roughly the same longitude, if I can draw a straight line, uh, a little bit farther west than New Orleans. You know, it's just right around, is it? There's 90 degrees west. I don't know how they, so it's a little east of there. So yeah, it's, it's pretty close. That would be basically in the central Gulf of Mexico if you moved it straight up into here, right? So, you know, it's not that far removed is my point. So conditions are starting to become favorable maybe across this region, perhaps showing us what's coming. So we got to be ready for that, all right? And that's going to lead me to something that I'll show you here at the end. Satellite picture of that system. The good thing is because it's still just the first week or so of May, at least the first 10 days, not much in the way of rapid development. <clears throat> it's not like we're at the peak of the hurricane season where everything is just primed and ready to go. So this system is going to be fairly slow to develop. But once again, just as a reminder, you folks up here in Mexico, the Pacific side of Mexico, maybe Guatemala, the Gulf of Tehuantepec, uh, you know, keep an eye on this. Remember, there are uh, a lot more things to consider with tropical cyclones than just the wind and the storm surge. Heavy rainfall, big problems, uh, you know, the wave action, and that leads me to this. It's Hurricane Preparedness Week 2017. Most of the people that watch these videos are usually up on their hurricane, you know, 101 kind of stuff, right? But just as a reminder, this is the week to think about it on a national scale. Really neat little infographics down here that have been put together. And, you know, stuff changes. So even if you think you know everything, yeah, go back through on your iPad or your laptop or whatever and just check these out sometime. Also, some really nice videos that they have put together on YouTube over here, which are very helpful. And this is the time of year. This is the period where you should be getting ready. Don't be waiting until a hurricane watch is issued and then start panicking. You know, we have six months in the off season to be ready. And yet people are still caught by surprise. It's just, you got to do stuff. Hey, you know, I'm doing stuff now, my team and I, to get ready. Because we don't want to stress when it's time to go out in the field. And hopefully none come here to Wilmington, North Carolina, so that I don't have to worry about it on a personal level. But if I do, i got to make sure that I'm ready. Little things like making sure your insurance is going to cover you. What does it cover you for? You know it doesn't cover flooding. you got to get that separately. Things like that can help make things even just a little easier down the road. So a lot to watch, a lot going on. I'll be here every day this week doing discussions because we do have something to talk about in the Pacific. So you get to talk or hear from me. Uh, maybe one day we'll have it where you can talk back to me in real time. That'd be fun as long as it doesn't get too crowded. Uh, but yeah, you'll be hearing from me each day this week until 90E. And probably didn't mention that. It is indicated as or designated as Invest Area 90E in the Pacific. We'll be tracking that all week long. Thanks for tuning in today, though. I do appreciate it, as always. And don't forget, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, subscribe, and you get notified when there are future updates or we are doing something live. Speaking of live, before I sign off, Thursday, June the 1st, and I'm going to do a graphic for this and have it ready for tomorrow. 
Oh, something was beeping at me. Thursday, June 1st, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, we're going to have a season opener hurricane broadcast. You know, like the first day of hurricane season, you have the opening day of baseball, and it's a, a big to-do or whatever. We're going to do the same thing for the hurricane season live and have some really neat things to talk about. I'll mention it again many times before Thursday, June the 1st. I just wanted to let you know about it now. Hey, have a good rest of your afternoon as always. I appreciate the attention that you give me. And like I said, I'll be back for the rest of the week until that system dissipates. Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with you again tomorrow.